Well, hey there, guys. I'm Axel the Beast, and this is the Curiosity Shop, the ZeldaEngine.net video mailbag where I answer your Zelda questions. Uh, Skitchen asks, since we know that Majora's Mask is your favorite game in the series, I am curious to know, what is your least favorite thing about Majora's Mask? Well, uh, you know, I think I think it comes down to one single part of the game, and that's actually the uh, the bottom of the well, or whatever it's supposed to be called, the well, the where those, there's all the gibdos, and you have to you have to take a bottled item or some kind of item, and you have to give it to him wearing the gibdo mask because he'll only accept it then. And then you have to give it to another one, and it's like this trade sequence. I just thought that part was annoying. There was like traps between rooms as you're navigating this place. I don't think there was a dungeon map, so it's very confusing to navigate. It was just an annoying place. There wasn't a lot of fun to it. But I actually think that's one part of the game that just kind of wasn't fun, or at least it was barely fun. And I just, I, I get annoyed every time I play through it. Tell me your guys' least favorite part about Majora's Mask in the comments, though. Uh, Peyton B6 asks, Octoroks have been a classic Zelda enemy, but they never have them in 3D games. Do you think that they will ever appear in a newer one? Well, I'm not qu quite sure what to make of the question, because... They've been in most of the games that have come out since A Link to the Past. Uh, in particular, Ocarina of Time and The Wind Waker and Majora's Mask, even, all had uh, Octoroks. They had the, uh, you know, the guys that pop out of the water. Now, if you're talking about the land-based ones, those have been in The Minish Cap, Phantom Hourglass, and Spirit Track since then as well. Uh, and they're also, the land type is confirmed to appear in Skyward Sword as well. That little guy spitting nuts in a bush, that's not a Deku Scrub, even though everyone tends to think it is. That's actually totally an Octorok. So, yeah. There you go. Know-It-All Bird asks, Considering the release of Ocarina of Time on the 3DS, what do you think about the future of overhead-style Zelda games? Well, I, you know, I've talked about this before, how I think that eventually they're going to come back to them. They're going to figure out uh, they're going to figure out that they should revive the old gameplay style and bring it back. And, you know, that might be just wishful thinking, because I'm a big fan of the 2D Zelda games, the overhead Zelda games. But at the same time, I think it's a realistic approach, because, you know, they have all these different gameplay styles with Zelda. They have the overhead styles, they have the 3D game styles, they have the, the transportation overworld style, they have the DS game style... And then they have, like, Zelda 2 whatnot. I don't think we're ever going to see the last of these, personally. And even though that it seems like the DS is going to be about 3D games, we still don't know what the direction of the original games on the DS, 3DS, are going to be like. And then there's downloadable titles. There's the pseudo-possible revival of Four Swords that's hinted at with them re-releasing that on the DSi shop or DSi service or whatever. So, bottom line is, I think we have definitely not seen the last of the overhead games. When we'll see it again, not sure. Uh, the Shadow Broker asks, Could you foresee parkour mechanics, such as running on walls and rooftop hopping, being implemented into the Zelda series? And if they were, how do you think it would affect the gameplay? Well, how it would affect the gameplay is you would be running on walls and jumping across rooftops. Because, basically, if they implemented that, it would be a very huge platformer element. And ultimately, I don't think Zelda is a platformer series, so I think it would be kind of a little much. I don't mind the idea of platforming elements. Hell, some of them already exist in the games, but to make it into an all-out platformer game seems excessive. I don't mind ex added to them adding to the jumping sequences, but I don't really think they should go that far to make Link into a freaking acrobat, jumping like ten times his height like platformer characters often do. I just think it's an unnecessary shift in that it's something a little more grounded, a little more in line with what we've already seen would be more appropriate. Uh, Juicy J asks, if voice acting were to be implemented into a Zelda game, would you want all text to have voice or just the cutscenes? Or would you not care either way? Uh, you know, I think ultimately it would have to be just the cutscenes, just because of how much text there would be, and or because that would be a more natural, like, uh, evolution. Fans would be more comfortable with that, they'd be more familiar with that. But at the same time, what I specifically want is kind of like what they did with uh, Mega Man X6. I don't know if anyone has played this or if that's even the best example of what I'm talking about. But in that, they have text boxes, exactly like Zelda does, except the text boxes are voice acted. So in this case, what I kind of want for a Zelda game is them to have voice acting for the text boxes and um, possibly only during cutscenes or maybe in general. Or maybe when there's not voice acting, they could have the sound effects like they have always had. And bottom line is, I think it'd be great if you could just turn the option on and off to have the voice or not. That would uh, be like the perfect thing for fans. If they don't like it, turn it off. If they do, leave it on. And it's just the text boxes anyway, so it's not that different. 
DialDude92 asks, Do you think music will play a big role in Skyward Sword like in Ocarina of Time, or a minor one like in Twilight Princess? Well, it depends on what you mean. If you're talking about, like, the Ocarina songs, like, the game will have this huge music theme, it's not going to be like Ocarina of Time. I can almost guarantee that. Even though they have the harp, I don't think the game's going to focus on the play on the instrument like uh, Ocarina of Time did. I do think there will be an increased emphasis on the soundtrack itself, just because they've got the new orchestral thing going on. It seems like they have a very distinct style with the folk music and the orchestral music going on. I think they're definitely going to make a really epic soundtrack and put a lot of work into it. It'll be noticeable, I think. But uh, I don't think it's going to have like this, this theme focus on the music other than that. Um, Majora's Mask asks, Do you think that we will be able to choose our own name for the bird in Scoured Sword just like we did with uh, in Twilight Princess for Epona? I actually think definitely yes, because in a lot of ways, I mean, I've talked about how Skyward Sword is the total blenderification of multiple Zelda game styles and themes, but I also think that in a big way it kind of pulls directly out of Twilight Princess, and it seems like with, well, my Dark Tribe theory starting to become kind of seriously grounded with some of the stuff they've revealed, it seems like they kind of like had this game in mind almost when they made Twilight Princess, or maybe the opposite, they have Twilight Princess in mind when they made this game. So I think they're definitely going to keep that element, and there are probably going to be other things of Twilight Princess that we'll see that are familiar. And particularly because they haven't like announced the bird's name or talked a lot about the bird, I think that's also hinting at that we will be able to name him. He might actually have an in-game name, like a preset name. In fact, I'm almost certain he will, but or, or she will. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that you'll definitely be able to name him, possibly with more emphasis on doing so than in Twilight Princess. Uh, Water2HP asks, Generally, the bosses in the dungeons of the 3D Zelda series have been quite systematic. You find a weak point, hit it, boss gets weakened, and then you hack and slash away. Now, with the introduction of motion controls, do you think bosses will lose their weak points and the fights will be more like, perhaps, the bosses in Kingdom Hearts? Uh, I think Kingdom Hearts is a bit excessive, because in Kingdom Hearts, it's really just combat against these big enemies, and just, you're just fighting, 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 fighting. There's no puzzle element whatsoever, really, at least most of the time. Uh, I definitely don't think they're going to drop the puzzle element, but I do think that the uh, combat element will be more pronounced, and I kind of hope it is, because I think that a lot of the recent boss fights, it's just a puzzle. There's no challenge outside of figuring out how to hurt the boss, and I think it should go back to how you had to figure out how to hurt it, but it was still a hard fight other than that. It's like there's the puzzle element and the combat element, and they, they're not the same thing, but they go together. I think that's the best uh, strategy, and I kind of anticipate Skyward Sword will do that. Judy asks, if Skyward Sword takes place before Ocarina and Link and Zelda are childhood friends, wouldn't Link and Zelda be the Ocarina of Time Link and Zelda's ancestors? I'm confused. Well, this is like, a, it's a common timeline uh, mistake that a lot of people don't know until they get really into the Zelda theorization, so I'll, I'll elaborate on it here. Uh, basically, all the links are different, with the exception of a few links that are carried over from the last game, like Ocarina of Time and, Maj and Majora's Mask, that's the same link. Uh, the Wind Waker and Fam Hourglass, that's the same link. But uh, other than that, the links are generally unrelated, and outside of a couple of hints and whatnot, they're generally not even family. The Zeldas, on the other hand, are pretty much always members of the royal family, and thus descendants of of the previous Zelda at some point. So, it's likely that this is going to be like one of the first Zeldas, but this Link, well, he's probably one of the first Links too, but at the same time, he's probably not going to be related. Unless the romance thing between Link and Zelda is going to be really pronounced, in which case, yeah, maybe, actually, I don't know. Uh... Aronian asks, Since it seems that in Skyward Sword the player is going to be using the Skyward Sword for most of the game, do you think that we will see upgrades for the sword like in the Minish Cap or at least the, like the bit of the Wind Waker? Um, maybe? Uh, you know, they have... Uh, it seems like you are going to have the Skyward Sword the whole game, but as for what's going to change throughout the whole game, oh, of course we don't know that yet. Uh, we know that you're going to be trying to forge the Master Sword, and it's been vaguely insinuated, but I don't know how strongly or solidly they meant this, that you're going to be uh, like constructing or getting working towards the Master Sword the whole game. So you might slowly upgrade into the Master Sword, or you might not, and you just have the Skyward Sword. I don't, I don't know. Uh, well, it's one of those things we're just going to have to see when the game comes out, though. All right, last question. Uh, KVDSE asks, When you take a look at the box art from Skyward Sword, you see the emblems of power, courage, and wisdom. Why do you think they put it there? Well, ultimately, those are major aspects of the series and of the lore, you know, the, the Triforces and the goddesses of those same traits. 
So, uh, given that this is like a prequel to the whole series, the Triforce is supposed to take on a different meaning. They keep mentioning this goddess, singular, not the goddesses we're, or gods we're familiar with. It's clearly that all, it's clear that all these elements are going to be very important to the title. So, I think it makes sense that we see that on the box, and obviously the game is going to very directly deal with some of these elements. How exactly? I can only speculate, and I haven't had much time to think about it, so I'll definitely I'll get back to you on that. Alright guys, that's it for this time. Be sure to send your questions to the contact page in the description, and I'll see you guys later.